Both timing and spacing are used to determine an object's speed. Whether you want to animate fast or slow motion, you'll have to control your timing and spacing to achieve the right feel for your animation. This video is for those of you who struggle with animation that looks too fast or too slow. I'll also show you how to make a specialized slow motion effect to apply the principles we go over in this video. So let's take a look at how timing and spacing work together to change an object's speed. Be sure to leave me a like and let's get started. I wanna get started and make art, but it's hard and it takes time that I don't got. I wanna make postcards from my own shop when it launches, but I always have a hard time with the process. Nonsense, I'm about to solve this. No downloads, all I gotta do is log in. Right inside of Chrome is where I run the show. Check this, we about to test it. PixCap is a 3D engine, powerful, running in your browser if compatible. Bountiful, asset and it's customizable. It's Impossible to count up all the thousands of guys on the phones, microscopes, cyber virus, firewalls, flights to take you home or on vacation in your favorite clothes. Illustrated and shaded, it isn't complicated. Move it, scale it, rotate it, or give it acceleration. You can give it an animation with a simple click and a drop, and don't stop. You can check the link in the box, it'll take you right to the spot. And creativity is hard, so work smart. Look. Give it imagination with a simple click and it's drag, you look rad Try it for yourself, it's quick and it's fast, it isn't tricky to master I can take on a task cause I got this in the bag Get started and make art, Pix caps got your back so it ain't hard 3D implement, all you need is internet Get creative if you dream you can make it look Get started and make art, Pix caps got my back so it ain't hard 3D implement, all I need is internet It's amazing all the time you could be saving so what is speed? Speed refers to how fast an object is moving. It's the rate at which an object covers distance. Fast objects cover a relatively large distance in a short period of time. And slow objects cover a small distance in a long period of time. Anything that's not moving has no speed. So in order to find an object's speed, we calculate its distance traveled over the time elapsed. Basically, spacing over timing equals speed. Let's see this in action. For example, I have this tennis ball flying through the air. How fast is it going? Well, we can calculate its distance over the time it takes to move. This tennis ball is moving a distance of eight inches over a period of 16 frames. Inches are spacing, frames are timing. When we do eight divided by 16, we get that this ball is moving a half inch per frame. Let's see an example now of how changing the timing will affect the speed of this motion. So we're going to keep the same distance of 8 inches, but this time, let's see what happens when a ball covers 8 inches in 8 frames. So we end up with 8 inches over 8 frames. Let's see what that looks like. Much faster. And the equation will actually support that, because now we're, we've moved up from a half inch per frame to one inch per frame. So by cutting the timing in half from 16 frames to eight frames, our object moves faster. What happens if we now, instead of changing the timing of this motion, what if we change the spacing? So we're gonna keep the same timing as the first one, 16 frames total to cover for the ball to fly through the air. And then this time we're gonna make the ball travel only four inches instead of eight inches. So four inches over a period of 16 frames. Let's see what that looks like. So it's only covering half the distance in the same amount of time, and we see that the object is moving a lot slower. And the equation supports that. Four inches over 16 frames gets us a quarter inch per frame. That's a lot slower. So as you can see, both the timing and the spacing of an animation affect the speed of an object's movement. It's not one or the other. Both of them affect your subject's speed. So how do we speed up or slow down an animation? Here's a rule you can remember. To slow down a movement, you can increase the timing or decrease the spacing. Basically, you make the action take longer to happen or make the action cover less distance. Now, to speed up a movement, you can decrease the timing or you can increase the spacing. Basically, you make the action take less time to happen or you make the action cover more distance. So I wanna leave this video off with a demonstration of how I would go about animating a dramatic slow motion effect by hand. Because in principle, it's very simple to do once you understand 
what speed is and how we determine speed as animators. So I'm gonna grab my pen now. So the first step would be to make your core drawings, your keys, extremes, and breakdowns. I have this character hitting a tennis ball. I've drawn in my keys, extremes, and breakdowns, my core drawings. If you don't know about core drawings, check out my video on character animation. So we have him start the swing. There's a little anticipation before that. And as you can see, I actually have mapped out the two extremes I want the slow motion to happen in between. It's gonna be between five and six is where I want this slow motion effect to happen. We're just gonna cover a small amount of distance because I wanna achieve that slow motion effect. Summary of step one, make your core drawings and then identify where you want the slow motion effect to happen. Okay, next you're gonna space out your drawings on the timeline until they look natural. I know that I'm going to be animating this on twos, so I'm just keeping in mind with my spacing up here where my drawings are landing on. When this is all done and in between, each drawing is going to be exposed for two frames. If you're not familiar with the process of in-betweening, check out my video on timing and spacing. We got it all covered here, folks. So specifically with this slow motion portion, remember slow objects cover a small distance in a long period of time. So we're, we already got the small distance covered, but let's maybe stretch out this timing a little more so we can dramatize the slow motion effect. And let's see how that looks when we play it. All right, so it's almost like it pauses. And so we know that the slow motion effect is going to take place between those two extremes. So anytime you wanna make a slow motion effect or you want something to go slow, it's gonna have a long timing and short spacing. We're taking 12 whole frames, maybe six drawings, to cover, what, maybe half a centimeter of distance traveled? That's how we're gonna achieve our super slow motion effect. Okay, so you make your core drawings and you decide where you want to put your slow motion portion. Step two, we spaced out our frames on the timeline according to what looked best and we gave our slow motion, give our slow motion movement a duration. That's gonna be a duration of, it's gonna be 13 frames, including the one that we're drawing on. 13 frames just to move this little distance. That's gonna give us a nice slow motion effect. So let's go ahead and write a timing chart for this animation. 11 to 23, that's our slow motion portion. 11 is a keyframe, all the way down to 23, which is an extreme. To emphasize this, slow motion effect even more. I'm gonna have it slow down into 23. Just using halves. And 21 is in there too. So it's gonna slow down into 23. That will really enhance the slow motion effect because towards 15 through 21, it's gonna be barely moving at all. Um, we're gonna be covering very, very little space. And I think that'll enhance what we're going for. We'll have it happen in halves. Roughly, you know. Might, might change depending on what looks good. Let's in between. All right, that's enough for the first pass. So just a few things I wanna point out so we can conclude. First thing, you really don't have to overthink slow motion. It really is just that, it's slow motion. It's just super slow. Taking a long time to do something little is what the definition of slow is. Don't overthink it when you're making your own slow motion effects in your animation. When this ball hits here, you get to see the real squash and stretch. And you know, this is a tennis ball. Um, so when I was, I animated this straight ahead, it doesn't follow the chart. But I was thinking of when you see those slow motion videos on YouTube or anywhere else, Objects that are usually pretty pretty rigid, right? Like tennis balls and even like golf balls. When you see them in slow motion, you see that they too have squash and stretch. So I definitely wanted to include that in this animation demonstration. Guys, definitely try this for yourselves. Use consistent timing, meaning like, you know, we animated this all on twos. We didn't change, we didn't add any ones or we didn't change around the timing to make it more dynamic. Try using consistent timing to animate something slow motion, and you'll see that it really is quite simple when you keep in mind that speed is just spacing over timing. Thank you so much guys for watching. This video took a lot of work, and thank you guys so much for 100,000 subscribers. By the time I upload this, I bet that we'll have already made it there, guys. 
thank you so much. I can't even express in words how much support you guys have given me. Just, I really appreciate it. That's for another video though. Thank you to PixCap for sponsoring this video. And thank you to my patrons for supporting free animation tutorials on YouTube. Okay guys, that's all from me. I'll see you later. Peace.